With GPT-4, I decided to give it a quick run through just to see how well it could do. I started with a similar question to what I did last time where I asked it for 10 Rails video ideas. And this time it definitely feels uh, a bit more like it has a, a, a plan behind what it's trying to say as opposed to just like 10 very basic uh, predictions of what you would cover. So that was interesting. But then I thought, what if we tried something that was so absurdly you know, involved uh, that it would really have to know what it was doing. So I asked it if it could create a tutorial or write a tutorial on using Stripe with Ruby on Rails for a subscription-based checkout workflow. And I told it to start by creating the Rails application. And uh, this was actually very impressive. So compared to what GPT-3 or even 3.5 would have come up with, uh, generally there, it got confused with like what a model and a controller actually were. It would tell you to make the model and the controller and then it would get sort of lost. But with this one, the only real thing I needed to uh, know how to do, and I didn't ask how to do it, uh, was create a Stripe account and get the API key. So you have to create a Stripe account. Uh, you have to uh, toggle it over to test mode go to like your developers uh, and then grab like a uh, API, uh, you know, API key, the public key and the, uh, the private key, right? So I have like the publishable key here and I have the secret key here uh, for my test mode data. And you can see I have uh, seven successful requests, one failed. And uh, on the like homepage for the balances here, we have this one transaction that took place for this like, you know, test course. So what, what this ended up doing for us is it walked us through the entire steps. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna follow these steps as well so you can see sort of what it creates. So over here, we have like the finished product where you enter your email, put in your card information, click subscribe, takes you through the workflow, charges the card and all that stuff. So this is effectively what GPT-4 thinks of when you ask, uh, how do I create like a Stripe checkout with Rails for a uh, monthly recurring course, right? So we're gonna CD out of here, do a Rails new video. Go ahead and run that because the first thing it tells us to do is create a Rails new and then the name of the application. Now, some of the syntax is a little bit messed up, so it gets a little bit confused. I've realized it like determines what the markdown language is based on the code in the markdown like backticks, and then it inserts the language. So this is like very often kind of off, uh, but okay, it tells us to CD into our application. We'll go ahead and do that. We'll go ahead and we'll run a code dot. I'll move the demo code over to the side. So I have my notes here, although I'm mostly gonna be copying from uh, chat GPT. So what we're gonna do is scroll down. We have to add two gems to our gem file. Now it's telling us to use Stripe and .env. Of course, if you were actually doing this in an application, you would use like Rails credentials colon edit to edit your, uh, your credentials. And then you would pass in like code dot space dash dash wait. Uh, with the Rails credentials inside of an editor so that you could uh, you know, actually edit your credentials files. So you have your encrypted credentials in Rails 7. Uh, but in this case, we're going with what it's suggesting. Uh, we could probably ask it to use the encrypted credentials, but we're just gonna go with this. Uh, it is important to note right now, I think GPT-4 has like a limit of like 100 tokens per four hour period, I wanna say. Uh, it also currently does not support images or videos. It is a multimodal model which is uh, confusing to say, uh, but the image support where it can take an image and describe it, which they demoed in their live stream, I have a link to that in the video description. Uh, I believe that is not in the chat GPT version of GPT-4 and even the API version, I think they aren't rolling out the image support initially. So that's gonna be further down the line. So that's just something to be aware of. It is pretty cool seeing what it can do. It can like, you know, read an image, describe it, uh, solve problems based on it, all that other stuff, but it's still kind of, you know, a little bit off. Uh, but okay, so we add both of these gems. I'm gonna hit enter, hit save, and then go ahead and run the bundle command here. The bundle command install the, installs those two gems. Then it tells us to create a .env file. We're gonna go ahead and right click .env. Now at this point, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't give us the keys, of course, because we have to actually go over to Stripe. So it doesn't tell us how to get these keys, right? So to do that, we go over to Stripe. It's fine that it doesn't mention this. I mean, this is, you know, pretty basic stuff, uh, but you just come over to like your, your developer page, you go over to your API keys, you go down here, you click on your publishable key and then your secret key. 
Uh, and you can also just, uh, you know, have it roll over these keys if you want, which just means like if you click roll, you can then tell it to expire the key like right now. And then you log in with your email and password and click roll API key. Uh, in my case, I'm just going to use these because I'm going to roll them after the video is over. So we're going to grab these, come over here and paste in the publishable key. We'll reveal the secret, come over here and paste in the secret key. Go ahead and save that. Uh, and then once that's done, we can then come over to the uh, chat GPT page. It tells us to add this to our get ignore, a very important step. Really happy it, it tells us to do that. So let's come over to dot get ignore at the bottom here. Let's just paste in the dot env. And then to verify this worked, we can run a get status command real quick, just to make sure that we don't have a dot env file in here. If we get rid of it, save this and run a get status again we should see .env at the top. So of course we wanna keep this here. We don't wanna push up our secret and public keys to our GitHub repos. That would be really bad. Uh, so this way it stops those from appearing and we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and close the .env file now and move on to step four. Here it tells us to create a config initializer stripe.rb. So let's come into config initializers, right click new file and call this stripe.rb. Uh, and then we can grab both of these copy and paste, and that is effectively done. It's just setting these environment variables by grabbing them from that env file by using the .env gem that is currently in the development and test groups. Pretty cool. Next thing it tells us to do is to create the subscription model. So we're just gonna click copy code, come over to our terminal, right click and hit enter. Again, I'm not really thinking while I'm doing this just because I, uh, you know, I wanna see what it's capable of doing. Of course, I already know, but I still think it's pretty cool. Um, I would suggest thinking while you do this, of course, because like, you know, maybe it doesn't mention to throw it in the, the get ignore. You end up putting your public keys into, you know, the, the scary internet and then you have like a bunch of charges to your account. Probably wouldn't be very cool. Uh, so maybe, you know, pay a bit more attention than I do. But here we're going to come into our routes, tells us to add the resources for the subscriptions only for the new and create, which is actually cleaner than what Rails has for us here. And then it tells us to set the root to be the subscriptions, oops, the subscriptions and the new action. So we'll go ahead and we'll save that. So that gives us a root. Next, we have to come into app controller, subscriptions controller. So app controller, subscriptions controller. It gives us some code here. We're gonna go ahead and copy this. I'm gonna paste it in here. And then it tells us, uh, where is it? The pay plan ID. So for this, it also doesn't mention how to do this, but uh, it did ask a follow-up question. Basically, you come over to your Stripe. You then have to create some products. So we'll come over to the products page. You can add a product or use an existing one. So if we click add product, we'll just say uh, my super rails monthly course. Uh, it's a good deal. We can then choose a category for it, upload an image that you'll see. We'll click on I don't know, one of my profile pictures, scroll down a bit. The pricing is uh, standard pricing. We'll set it to uh, let's do something different than I did in the demo. So we'll go with uh, $49.99. It will then tell it to be recurring and it'll be a monthly recurring and for the ID, we'll leave it blank. So we'll click save product. That'll give us a product that we've generated. So this is the monthly course. Uh, and then it gives us an API ID right here, uh, but I don't wanna use this. So at this point, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit. I scrolled through here. I had to tell it to continue, which messed up the formatting a bit. But if I come down here, I was like, hey, how do I get the plan ID from Stripe? Is that the API ID? Which is, this is what I was referring. And I said, yes, the plan ID is the API ID uh, by Stripe to a specific subscription plan. When you create a subscription plan in Stripe, it generates a unique identifier for that plan. You'll need this ID to associate a su subscription with the plan when creating a subscription for a customer. It then tells you, log in your Stripe dashboards, click on products. If you haven't created one yet, click add a product. Once you have a product, click on the product to view its details. On the product details page, you'll see the pricing section. This is where you can add and manage pricing plans. If you haven't created a pricing plan, do that. Uh, after you've added it, you'll see the plan listed. The plan ID or the API ID will be visible here. It usually starts with price underscore. We come over here, we see price underscore, we click copy. You come over here, it said to, if we scroll up again, uh, it said to replace this plan ID with whatever we needed to, right? So we'll paste this in here. Then we do the next step, which is creating the checkout form. So in app view subscriptions new.html. So let's come over here to app views subscriptions new.html. It tells us to uh, put this code in. So it gets cut off here. 
because it has like a limit on the number of tokens it can reply with. So usually I just tell it to continue. Sometimes I tell it to continue with the last line of code. I wasn't sure if this was fixed yet, uh, but if you just hit continue, it still has the same bug where it will like break the markdown. So you can see here, it gets a little bit confused and it starts just generating random markdown. So I guess continue still doesn't quite work in this context. But we'll go ahead, we'll grab this, we'll paste this in, scroll down here, and then we'll copy the rest of this, which is a big string. Uh, and then we'll paste this below everything else. So we come up here, we have to get rid of this like back tick RB. And then I'm gonna hit save with just control L. My formatter will clean this up. We'll take a look at what this generated. So it creates the form for us. It's a form tag for the subscriptions path with an ID that's sort of hard coded. It then does some of the form generation for the inputs for us, which is interesting. It then includes the Stripe uh, a source for the uh, JavaScript uh, API. It then creates like a bunch of, of JavaScript for us that handles the logic on the form. So we'll take a look at this in a second, uh, and then it, it eventually creates the uh, form for us. It appends the hidden attributes that it needs, and then it submits the form. So it's not the Rails way, that's for sure. It's definitely doing some JavaScript stuff here. Uh, but we'll keep going, we'll see what happens. It then mentions, hey, you can also do some styling. Uh, does it mention where to put the styling? Uh, add the following to app assets style sheets subscription. So let's come over to app assets style sheets. And here it mentions subscriptions.scss. We're not using SAS, so that's kind of an error. So we're just going to go ahead and put this into application.css. Uh, and then we'll go from there. So this is wrong. And the new stuff here is sort of not the Rails way. It's got inline JavaScript too, but you have to remember this probably doesn't have a point of reference for what stimulus is in Rails. That's fine though. Now it tells us to run the server. And this is where we run into the first issue. So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna run the server, refresh the page. We have this working. Uh, let me refresh and actually get to this page. So here we can see we have the email, we have the card. So let's do an, a test at case.com. For the card number, Stripe gives you a test card, which is just 42 repeated a bunch of times. So you can just type 42 over and over again, it'll fill out all this info. And now if I hit subscribe, we should get uh, the first error here, hopefully. So it does the post request and then it tells us invalid uh, request error in subscriptions controller create. So the customer has no attached payment source, which means we haven't created a customer. So I come over here after it answers this question, I go, hey, this customer has no attached uh, payment source for or default payment method. Please consider blah, 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 blah. I just paste in the error with no explanation and then says my apologies. Uh, here's the updated form. So first is the new.html.erb form, which is this one. Uh, it still does the same thing, but if we expand it here, you can see we get a couple extra lines of code where it handles some of the additional logic. The other part that it does do here uh, is, uh, you can see right down here, uh, it tells you to update the create action. So we'll come over to the create action in our controller, and this is where it actually handles the, the problem. So the new create action here is significantly longer than the other one because it handles creating that customer. Now, the interesting thing here is it doesn't do like a find or create. So there's no, you know, identity here. Uh, so you're gonna have like a new customer created each time, uh, unless there's like a conflict here. I'm not really sure how Stripe handles it. Uh, but then for the plan, we paste this in. So after it creates the customer, it does the subscriptions, sets the email, the customer ID and all of that. So we'll get rid of the create action here, move this up, save this. It does handle the card errors, which is nice. But now if we come over here and refresh the page, I'm just gonna go to localhost port 3000. I'll do a test at case.com with a 42 all over again, just like this. There we go. And now I'll hit subscribe and we'll see what happens. So it starts the post processes and then eventually it goes through here and we can see it inserted into subscriptions, the email, the Stripe customer ID, the subscriptions, etc. We come over to the Stripe page and go to home for our test data. We can see here we now have that additional transaction handled and we have, oops, we have the data stored on our Rails server here. Now there's no like redirect logic. That said, 
for what three prompts this is pretty impressive i would have preferred to not see you know inline javascript like this and maybe a better use of a form uh than you know just a basic form tag kind of weird uh setup but you know overall you can't complain uh i mean you can everyone can complain all the time that's what we're good at as humans uh in terms of like what the uh increase has been here from what we got with like gpt3 where it couldn't even do like a basic blog post uh to you know this is is a lot better um for like you know developing your applications so yeah hopefully this was interesting hopefully this is helpful and hopefully i'll see you in the next video